Damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor, not a subtle actor. Yeah, that's right. In space, no one can hear your acting career die. Star Trek Into Darkness. I feel like you have to do this. This is my Benedict Cumberbatch. Melancholy British wit face. We love the movie, now it's time to tell you what we hated about it, because we're fucking cool like that. So the first big problem with Star Trek Into Darkness happens in the first act of the film. In the first act of the movie, you see Kirk and crew of the USS Enterprise on a planet called Nibiru. 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 And on this planet, there are these indigenous aliens that look like they came out of a fucking tool video. And so these aliens are like super primitive, barely just discovered the wheel, according to Commander Pike. And this is no spoilers, by the way. This all happens first, like 10, you can probably find this on like Rotten Tomatoes or something. General plot synapsis here. And so they are saving the inhabitants of this planet from a volcano that's about to explode. Spock has to go into the volcano, releases this device explosion fusion thing, freezes everything in the volcano, whatever. So the big caveat of this point is that the prime directive of the mission is that none of the planet's inhabitants see the USS Enterprise or their crew because it would reveal technology that they have no way to conceive of. It would basically turn their entire world view upside down. So of course, Kirk breaks this directive, being Jim Kirk, and you're sort of led to believe that this isn't just gonna be a problem for Kirk and crew, that this is gonna be a problem for the inhabitants of the planet. Well, it is a problem for Kirk and crew, and it sort of, you know, sows the seeds of the rest of the movie's conflict. But for the inhabitants of the planet who are supposed to be protected the most by this prime directive and thus you know, logically therefore harmed the most by failing to uphold this prime directive, there's not really that many consequences. I mean, you see them sort of worshiping the Enterprise, but then it's just gone. Like, it's not really talked about again. Like, I have a lot of friends who worship the Enterprise and they're not that fucking bad. Moving on also in the first act, although this is the thing that sort of sets us into the second act in the movie, there's an event which happens at the end of the first act and transitions us into the second act. And it's supposed to be the big emotional thrust which pushes Jim Kirk through the rest of this movie. Movie. No spoilers, I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but if you sit through the first five minutes or so of this movie, you already know what it is. You don't have to be told before it happens, you've got it figured out, it's that predictable. My next problem with this movie is about performances. Oh my fucking God, can we tone it back? So Spock's girlfriend in this movie is Ohura, Ohura, Ohira, Ohura, whatever the fuck her name is. So this chick has like, you know, a few very important core scenes that she has to pull off really well. And one or two of those, she just goes way over the top. And she's not the only one, the guy who plays Bones. I mean, it is mentioned at some point, his stupid metaphors are stupid and it is reflected at some point that they are stupid, but that doesn't make them stop. <laughs> Another bitchy thing about the performances in this movie, uh, there is a chick in this movie, that chick over there, only in it to be ridiculously hot. So she plays this guy's daughter. He is the uh, Colonel, I think he's the big general guy in, in Starfleet, he's a big deal. And he oversees Kirk and he has a lot of issues with Kirk and him and Kirk end up butting heads in a lot of ways. But this chick has a British accent and her father does not. Nitpicky, I know, but it was there. And I hate to say it, people are gonna fucking kill me for this, but it's the way I felt about it. Is it just me or is Benedict Cumberbatch getting a little too comfy in that speech pattern of his? You're ordinary, you're on the side of the angels. I may be on the side of the angels, but don't think for one second that I am one of them. You think your world is safe. It is an illusion. Enjoy these final moments of peace. I mean, if you're a Sherlock fan like I was, you know, I, I heard about Sherlock right after on BBC, Sherlock, if you don't fucking know, GTFO. But Benedict Cumberbatch, who plays the villain John Hatcher, I think, uh, in this movie, plays Sherlock in that series, that's what I'm referencing. So if you watch that whole series like I have, you're really, really used to Benedict Cumberbatch in addition to some of the movies he's been in. And you're gonna notice a lot of things that you've noticed before about him. 
I don't know. He's starting to give me an air of one trick pony. While we're on the subject of Cumberbatch and his character, let's talk a little bit about how narratively his character plays into the storyline. So you are led to, after you actually meet his character, or after the crew of the Enterprise actually meets his character, you are led to sort of empathize with the character that Benedict Cumberbatch plays. And you are led to do that so much so that a big chunk of the second act of this movie is just building you up to feel for Benedict Cumberbatch. But when this empathize fest begins, he's already done the terrible thing in the first act of the movie that makes you hate him. So you're a little conflicted-ish. But that confliction is compounded by the fact that Benedict Cumberbatch's character gets no resolution in this film, narratively. His character is just stowed away, put away, out of sight, out of mind, and the whole bitch he had that made him turn into a badass supervillain is just shoved away. <laughs> and I mean that quite literally, when you see the movie, you'll understand. While we're talking about the storyline a little bit, can I just say, this was another Kirk slash Spock fiesta. Not that I necessarily have a huge problem with that. The dynamic between Kirk and Spock is really interesting to watch and was in the first movie. And don't get me wrong, in this movie, it definitely evolves. It's not what it was in the first movie. But that being said, it's still all about Kirk and Spock. I mean, you do get one or two nice touches where there's some growth in characters. I especially noticed that with Simon Pegg's character. I really fucking love Simon Pegg's character in this movie. But for the most part, it's a Kirk and Spock extravaganza. The characters you're going to see the most growth with, Kirk and Spock, just like the first movie. And unfortunately, you don't see it very much with Benedict Cumberbatch, which is the one person you really, I didn't, I anyway, going to this, really wanted to see it with Benedict Cumberbatch. Didn't you feel like at the end of The Dark Knight, Joker actually sort of learned something in a weird way? Like when he's hanging upside down, you know, from the crane thing and Batman's looking at him all crouched down. And it seems like in that moment, the Joker can't really wrap his head around the fact that humans do have this better side to themselves. That's what you want from Cumberbatch in this movie. You want him to have this realization. And there were plenty of moments for him to have it. I mean, his big beef, again, this is not spoiling anything, his big beef is with the Federation. He is shown throughout the entire course, and he admits to being shown. In fact, it's the entire reason he seeks out Kirk. He is shown that there are some good people in the Federation. And he ends up interacting with these people very intensely. But that does not shake his belief in the fact that the Federation is absolutely evil and must be destroyed at all costs never even flinches in that belief even though he's facing down what is a great relationship between a great crew of space explorers. So that's it. I know this is a light, light what's wrong with video, but honestly, I was going into this movie expecting it to be the one that I've been waiting for. If you've been listening to the dork pod, you'll know that I'm always looking for the movie that I'm going to go into that I cannot make a what's wrong with video about because it's too good. And I was expecting it to be this movie. And for the most part, it's come the closest. But that being said, there are problems with this movie, problems that do hinder the movie for a discerning viewer. And that's why we had to make this video. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please do check out dorkjuice.com. Find us on Facebook, find us on Twitter. Check out the Dork Pod, it is our podcast. Every weekend we do this, every Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. You can find more info on that on Twitter by looking up the hashtag thedorkpod or just checking us out at Dork Juice Tweets. And that's all, I am getting married. Wow, see there's the... There's the ring. I already wear it, cause blang blang. I am getting married in like a week and then I'm going on a honeymoon out of the country for like a week after that. So there will not be any what's more what's wrong with videos for a little while. I'm sorry, I'll be back as soon as possible. But again, there is some great video content coming up from other people at Dork Juice. So stay tuned to this channel for more info on that. Please do subscribe to this channel and find us on all the things I already told you about. So I've been Joel from DorkJuice.com. Peace out, motherfucker.